do I do get the satire, but it'll save us a lot of time going forward. That is a training session in itself for you. May I pose a very simple question that will open this floor? Honorable member, forward, unless you are rising... Recognize the uh, Honorable the Minister of Public Works. Thank you very much, House Chairperson. And I just want to take a moment to reflect uh, on the Honorable Member from the DA's uh, work, or the reflection on the Zondo Commission. And uh, indeed, there's a lot of prosecutions that still need to come out of that Zondo Commission. And just as we in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure are dealing with extortionists in the construction field, we also have political extortionists that have found their way into this chamber that were named in the Zondo Commission. And I think that it is imperative that Parliament reflects on how it is possible that people that captured and gutted the state are able to sit in a chamber as hollowed and as dignified as this and then dictate laws to the people of the Republic of South Africa. And so if we want to give expression to the Zondo Commission, I think it's important that we also reflect on how those extortionists have ended up in, the, in this chamber and what we should be doing about it. I thank you very much. Thank you. Um, honorable member, um, why are you rising? Chair, can, I, can I rise on a point of order? Yes, what is your point of order? Uh, but, uh, can I raise on a po point of order, Chair? Yes. I think that the, um, the honorable minister is uh, casting a special on, on order members. Casting aspersions on members who'd be making legislation. And I think that uh, we have taken an oath, uh, all of as members here, and, and also yeah. for misleading the House Chair. On the can, can I make the point? The Justice Zondo's report makes recommendations for various entities, law enforcement entities, to investigate. Honorable member. To investigate. He's never made. Thank you, honorable judgment. member. He's never made. Honorable member, please take your seat now. Thank you. Order. Honorable member, honorable members. Uh, a point of order is supposed to point exactly to a breach of rules. Uh, you have alleged that the, the member has cast, the minister has cast aspersions on members who are supposed to, to, uh, make laws, uh, but he has not identified a member. Thank you. Please, chair, please chair, hold not, your seat. Not, for, chair, please hold your seat no, for now. Chair, Honorable chair, member, please listen, hold your chair, seat. You must listen and follow the rules. Please chair, hold your seat for chair, now. You must follow the rules. Honorable member, I'm on the floor. But you must listen take to Take your me seat. Well. Honorable member, take your seat. Chair, you've got a duty to listen to me. In terms of no, the rules. honorable member. In, in terms fact, of the rules, honorable member. No, I don't say. Please take your seat, chair. I won't take my seat. I want honorable take my member. Seat. I, you, uh, I, I direct you in terms of the rules to take your seat. You are not to disregard the authority of the chair. Only if it is it is in line with the rules, honorable chair. member. Only if it is in line with the rules. I will give you another opportunity to take your seat. Thank you. So a point of order must be raised and point to a specific breach of the rules. I've already ruled that I don't see a member implicated. Secondly, uh, a point of order is not to be used to, to engage or debate. And you have then ventured into an argument about the merits and the demerits of the Zondo Commission and the, the legal standing of it. That cannot be entertained as part of a point of order. So unfortunately, your point of order is not sustained. Honorable member, before I recognize you, I've now made my ruling. In terms of the rules, the ruling is final, and a point of order is not to be raised on the ruling. So if you want to raise something new, a new possible breach or alleged breach of the rules, you're welcome to do so. Okay, you stand down. Thank you. The last uh, opportunity 
Honorable Souls, do you have a point of order? Uh, my I am not Souls. Uh, yes. Chair, uh, we, we might look like I'm not Souls. Uh, chair, may I raise a point of clarity as I'm brand new here and I'm just a little bit confused? Unfortunately, there's no point of clarity. Chair, it's going, on, to, help. On it's going to help all of the new MPs. It's a very short question, Chair. No, on, Honorable Member, unfortunately, this is not a training session. Chair, I understand. Um, Chair, uh, Chairperson. Please stand down and let you have a point of order. Chairperson. Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable, honorable with, Member. With respect, please stand down. Chairperson, with respect, with respect, I do, I do get the satire, but it will save us a lot of time going forward. That is a training session in itself for you. May I pose a very simple question that will open this floor? Honorable and, and Member, forward, unless you are rising in terms of the rules, I unfortunately have no authority to recognize you. Fine, Chairperson. I get you. Thank you. Honorable Mente. Well, Chair, an order on you. When you are correcting members, you can't say this is not a training session. That's that's extremely undermining and patronizing. Thank you. you I are wrong. Thank you. I take your point. That's not correct. Thank you. You must apologize. Yeah. You must apologize. This is not you a, can't treat us like that. Okay. Thank you. This is not a training session. You but, can't I, say that. but I apologize. Don't apologize. I'm going to get you. You can't do that. You can't dismiss us like that. Thank you. But we are members of this house. Thank you. Chair, you indicated that I, I agree with you. I could have treated it more sensitively. Can you now please stand down? No. You did not hear your Thank Honorable Member, please. I've, I've recognized this Thank member. Thank you very much. Uh, Point of order, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Point of order. Sure. I've recognized this member. Please hold your. I raised it before you recognized it. No. No. Thank you. True. Not true. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I rise on Rule 69C uh, that the member Montana, you ruled that he must sit down. And he deliberately said, I am not going to sit down. <clears throat> Can you please rule on that? Yeah. Because it's a. Disorderly conduct. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Honorable Member. Um, uh, ultimately, me and the Honorable Montana found one another. I'm satisfied that after some engagement, he did comply with the rules, so your order is not sustained. Honorable uh, Ngobane, uh, there was a hand here from the MK. No, not yours, Honorable Manier. Um, point of order. The point of order chair was based on rule. Uh, 82. That refers to reference to member in respectful terms. It says in the House and in Honorable case, member. Members must refer to one another in respectful terms. That's all we're asking for. Uh, Can you also just in, ensure in, that you refer yes. to us in respectful terms? Yes. That's all we're asking for. Thank you. We'll, we'll do. The last uh, ministerial response is that of the Minister of, Minister of Trade and Industry. Thank you very much, Honorable House Chair. Firstly, let me welcome the words of support to both the state visit as well as the forum on China-Africa cooperation, FOCAC, from Member Muela. At present, House Chair, China is South Africa's largest trading partner, globally and a key investor in the country, with investments in sectors such as the automotive Honorable, sector. Honorable Minister, my apologies for interrupting you. I, I have a hand there of the Honorable Trollop. Uh, House Chair, I also apologize for interrupting you and the Minister, but we can't see him. Can he just tilt his screen a little bit so we can see him? Thank you. Honorable Minister, there's a request that you just uh, tilt your screen to become visible in the chamber and obviously as part of the broadcast as well. Okay, I hope that's better. I've tilted the screen. <clears throat> I was saying that at present, China is South Africa's largest trading partner globally and a key investor in our country with investments in sectors such as automotive, renewable energy, and ICT. In 2019, South Africa and China's bilateral trade increased by 33% from 26 billion rand, or rather dollars, to 34 billion dollars in 2023. However, in this relationship, 
South Africa experiences a trade deficit of $9.5 billion, according to the latest statistics. Therefore, it was important that as the president led us in the state visit, we focus on reconfiguring uh, the trade relations with more value-added products from South Africa. Some of the key outcomes of the state visit for South Africa included, firstly, an agreement on changing the structure of trade into more value-added products, and secondly, South Africa secured cooperation from China in three value chains relating to decarbonization, digitalization, and transport and logistics. Thirdly, key Chinese investors in both Shenzhen and Beijing expressed interest with the expand their investment or for greenfield investment into South Africa. And fourthly, through the FOCAC, there was a commitment to encourage Chinese companies to invest in the African continent and localize their value chains. South African firms participated in the business forum where further six MOUs were signed between Chinese entities and South African companies and our DFIs. And this is to strengthen cooperation to promote industrial development, promote technology cooperation, to advance decarbonization, and to promote investments in renewable energy. We are therefore confident that these efforts will benefit our country and our people as we continue our journey of industrialization and reindustrialization. And we should continue the processes of now focusing on implementation of the MOUs as signed and agreed. Thank you very much. Thank you, honorable members. That concludes ministerial responses. The secretary will read the first and second orders together. Consideration of draft notice and schedule determining the rate with effect from 1 April 2023, which allowances and benefits are payable to members of Commission for Gender Equality annually. Consideration of draft notice and schedule determining the rate with effect from 1 April 2024, at which salaries, allowances and benefits are payable to members of Commission for Gender Equality annually. Thank you. I will now recognize the chairperson of the committee, the Honorable Dunjwa, to introduce the report. Good afternoon, Honorable House Chair, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, and Honorable Members of this August House. The Portfolio Committee of Women, Youth, Persons with Disability, having considered the draft notice of the President's determination of salaries and allowance of members of various institutions, including the Commission for Gender Equality. A letter dated the 28th May 2024 was received from the President of the Republic, His Excellency Honorable Sri Ramak Ramaphosa, requesting the National Assembly to consider the draft notice of the determination of the salaries and allowances of members of the various institutions, including the Commission of Gender Equality, in terms of determination of remuneration of office bearers of the Independent Constitutional Institution Laws Amendment Act 2014, Act Number 22 of 2014 and 2023-2024 and 2024-2025, usually required by the end of the financial year. On the 9th of July 2024, the matter was referred to the Committee for Consideration. Section 21. 2195 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa 1996 provides that national legislation must establish framework for the determination of salary allowance and benefits of judges, public protectors, auditor general, and members of the commission provided for in the Constitution, including Commission of Gender Equality, referred to in Section 192 of the Constitution. The, de the determination of the remuneration of office bearers of the Independent Institu Constitutional Institution Laws Amendment Act 2024, number 22, which came into operation on the 1st of April 2019, creates the necessary framework to determine the salaries of office bearers of Chapter 9 institutions mentioned in the Constitution. Section 8. One of the Commission of Gender Equality, Act 39 of 1996, provides 
that full-time and part-time members of the Commission of Gender Equality are entitled to the annual salary and such allowances or benefits as determined by the President from time to time by notice in the Gazette and approved by the National Assembly. The President received the annual salary recommendation for the public office bearers of the independent constitutional institutions for the independent from the independent commission sorry for the remuneration of the public office bearers the commission having considered among others the state's wages bill and the impact of the public office bearers salary increment on the fiscal of the country recommended a 2% salary increment for all public office bearers for the financial year 2023-2024 and 2.5% salary increment for the financial year 2024-2025. The president reports that he has taken into consideration the economic challenges of the country is experiencing as well as the current fiscal constraints and, the in and, and intended to make determination on the matter with the effect from the dates as specified in the table below as follows. The remuneration levels with effect from the 1st of April 2023 and 1st of April 2024 of members of the Commission of Gender Equality. But Welcome to RT Select Times. That's it for now, guys, and thank you so much for watching this video. And please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more.